All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to do a video on my culling process uh, during events. Of course, culling is a great thing. You know, when you're you're culling during a tournament, you're probably having a pretty good day. Uh, so it's really, really important to do it correctly. And before we get star started on my specific process for culling, uh, I need to, to, to mention that this is not necessarily the best for you. You know, I, every person is gonna do it a little bit different, and that doesn't necessarily mean that, that anybody is right or wrong. The only thing that I think it, people really need to pay attention to and, and make sure that they're doing correctly, and I'm constantly trying to, to update my calling procedure uh, to, to meet this requirement, but that is fish care. Taking care of your fish, reducing the amount of stress, and reducing the amount of handling and time out of the water. That's all that, that I really want to do while remaining efficient and also uh, making sure that, that I'm I'm staying organized and not making mistakes, you know, like that that really bad mistake of, of putting a six fish in the boat and then making another cast or having four fish in the boat, which I've, I've done before. Uh, you know, both of those are, are you know, big deals. Uh, coming to the weigh-in with, with six fish is a big deal. Coming to the weigh-in with four can be a really big deal too. So let's get started with my, my uh, uh, cull process. My cull process, my whole theory around culling is that that I need to have a standardized procedure. That way, uh, the, the risk of, of making mistakes and, uh, and overlooking things is very, very low. But there's some uh, tools that I'm definitely uh, always keeping with me in the boat when it comes to calling. The first thing is a good call strap set. Uh, I only use non-puncture Coal straps. I think nowadays there's really no reason to be using those punctured style uh, coal straps where you actually have to punch a hole in a fish's jaw. Um, I really don't think that those those are, are necessary. I think they're outdated, and uh, and I think we need to get past those. That being said, though, I, I, I've heard a, a pretty strong argument uh, against some of these these uh, puncture-free ones. So it's still something I'm still trying to figure out the best procedure for it. I try to pick the one that that uh, the coal straps that end up uh, still have a good amount of pressure on them, so they're not constantly falling off, but also are, are low profile. That the, so the fish can can naturally open and close their mouth to uh, to not inhibit their breathing, and so I. I really like these. I think these are the TH Marine. Yeah, they're TH Marine ones. Um, they work pretty good. Uh, I haven't had any issues with them. I've had to write uh, numbers on each of them because it just is is by color, and I don't cull by color uh, generally. But um, but yeah, non uh, non puncturing uh, cull tags are really really key. But again, I've heard that that uh, some people say that that this will cut off circulation and actually you know bruise. Uh, fish. That is something that that I I really am continuing to look into. I have not seen that personally, where the the puncture free uh, call tags have have caused any damage. But I'm keeping an eye on that. Again, always trying to perfect uh, my my call system so I'm not hurting the fish. That's the whole idea. All right, so we got these non puncture free cull straps. That's the first thing. I always keep five. So five right here uh, under the lid of my, my live well. I always, every before every tournament day, put them back on this, this little hanger here and put them in order of number. So I, I only, you know, first fish is always one. Second fish is always number two and so on and so forth. Uh, so I always stay organized as far as that. I'm never digging into the live well and trying to find the right number and I'm never making the mistake of putting the wrong coal strap on uh, you know the wrong fish. I also have a sixth coal tag which is used for putting fish on a coal beam. So if I catch a six fish I put this one on that six fish and then whichever fish is is the similar size that I'm looking to compare and contrast uh, I you know I hang both of them with the coal straps uh, very briefly figure out which one's bigger and then I always put the the sixth one, which is for me, it's the black one. I always make sure that this one is the one that uh, it gets taken off of a fish and remains free and clear. So, uh, 
Um, I, I never use the six one in the live well. It's only for the cold beam. Uh, and speaking of cold beams, I've also got a cold beam. This is a tool that, that is as uh, accurate as anything uh, when it comes to calling. So it's really important to keep these, even though we've got really accurate scales nowadays, cold beams are still really, really important because it comes down to ounces sometimes. And then finally, uh, we've got a good scale. This one right here is the Catch Commander, not sponsored by them, don't have association with them, um, but I, I like this one. It tends to work out pretty well, um, pretty accurate. It, it weighs a little bit light sometimes, which is better than heavy, I guess. Um, but the thing I like about it is the fact that it keeps five fish in the, uh, in, in the scale, which is really important to me. Uh, and it also is really easy to use. So I don't have to fidget with this too much. I can just use it and, and keep going, which is uh, the whole point is efficiency. All right, so let's talk about my specific cold procedure. Every single day or the night before, I end up clearing my, my scale, okay? So I clear the scale so I've got all five spots uh, completely clear and free, make sure it's got a fresh battery in it. And, uh, and essentially what I do different than other people is that I really like to standardize everything. I'm going to put a fish that I catch on the scale regardless of what size it is. Now, if it, I know it's not going to, to help and I'm not gonna need to put it in the live well or it's, or it's too small, obviously I'm not gonna put it on the scale. But if it's a fish that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up keeping, I'm gonna put it on the scale and, uh, and so I can designate exactly which number it needs to go on. And from there, after I weigh it and after I save it in the five spots on the scale, I take the corresponding coal tag or coal strap, whatever you wanna call it, and I put it on the fish and put it in a live well. Now, that's where a lot of people will disagree with me. A lot of people will say, you know, well, you know, why would you go through the, the time to do that when you don't have a limit? Or, you know, why would you put a, a call tag on a, a larger fish? Um, and, uh, you know, those are all good points. I have found over years of experimenting that as long as I continue to do that standardized procedure of weighing the fish and putting them on the, the the, uh, the, the coal tags, I don't make the mistakes. Like I don't make mistakes of, of not having enough fish or, or having one or more too many. Um, so that's really important. It also helps me to know exactly, uh, you know, how much I've got at any one time. I can make decisions based on how much weight I've got in the box. So that's really important to me. But here's a couple points that I, I'd like to point out when it comes to those those arguments against the way that I do this is number one, I think that, that calling your fish as they come aboard is way less uh, 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 stressful for the fish overall than, than, you know, once you catch five, then starting to, to shuffle through them and figure out which, you know, uh, weighing all of them. I feel like getting them on the scale and, and putting a tall call tag on them right away way reduces the amount of time that I'm, I'm handling those fish. So the only time that I'm really handling those fish is the initial catch and then uh, if I end up having to cull them. And that's really, really important. So uh, you don't find me shuffling around and, and uh, you know moving fish around in the middle of the day that much because of this procedure. And the second point that I like to make is the fact that yes, if you're on a major school and you don't want them to shut down, the worst thing that you could do is have to, to shuffle through your calling procedure at fish number five, you know, or, or shuffling through all of the fish in your live well and, and weighing them and, and, uh, and all that. So organizing a whole limit of fish is going to be way, way harder and way more time consuming if you're on a hot bite that you need to get back up on the troll motor and make another cast and keep that school activated. So overall, I think I'm saving time. I'm more efficient. I'm staying organized and and I, I really uh, have uh, mistakes happen very often at all. All right, so once we have our five fish and uh, you know we're starting to cull, you know if you're making big culls, like you put it on the, the, the scale and it's a quarter pound, a half pound or more uh, of a cull, then the scale is pretty pretty much all you need. But when you get to that point where you're like under a quarter pound or you're like a, you know an ounce or two a, a, a difference, that's when you're gonna need the cull beam. The cull beam is way more accurate, it's not gonna lie. Whatever way that, that scale tips, 
um, that you, you know exactly which one is going to be bigger. So uh, the, the coal beam is not something that can be um, obsolete from the uh, from the scale so I always carry the cold beam and again you know just just reduce the amount of time that you're you're taking the fish out of the water and handling them and one thing I do need to mention is is that you know as far as fish care goes one of the biggest things that I see and I cringe a lot and, and something that I've had to, to really just uh, make sure that I don't do is making sure that you you reduce the amount of time that the fish is hanging with their full weight on a coal tag uh, Obviously, on the cold beam, it's going to be uh, impossible to do that. You need to have them hanging unencumbered to get an accurate reading on that. But I see a lot of people pulling all of the fish out of live well, full weight, uh, just hanging from the cold tag. That's not good on the fish's jaw. Obviously, we're doing a lot of stuff that could uh, can injure a fish's jaw, but you want to minimize that. So one thing that I like to do is when I'm I'm looking for a fish, yeah, I'll pull up the cold strap, but once it gets out of the box, at, once it gets out of the live well, you know, I'll hold the fish, and I try to do that. Sometimes I I, I mess that up and I I'm not thinking about it, and I'll pick them up uh, with their full weight, but really try to either lift the fish or hold them over the back of the head uh, and or you know under the belly, something so you're not putting that pressure on the jaw. So that's just another thing. So overall, that is my procedure. Uh, one thing that I do need to mention is I, I, I know I did say that I pull a put a cold tag on every single fish that I catch, there's some caveats to that. Again, we're trying to reduce the stress and allow them to breathe uh, unencumbered. And if I have a fish that is injured, you know, maybe it's hooked in the tongue or something like that, and I'm trying to take care of it and make sure that it doesn't die, um, I will not put a cold strap on that fish. I wanna reduce the amount of stress on that fish. So I might put them in one side of the live well and just throw the tag in there. So I'm still using that tag. I'm still having that tag associated with a specific fish, um, but it's not attached to the fish. So sometimes I'll do that. And also for smallmouth, smallmouth tend to need, um, you know, the, the extra room for their mouth to open and close to breathe. So a lot of times I'll do the same thing. And sometimes I have to, to get a little bit more creative with smallmouth, uh, but not all the time. You know, if they're real healthy and I, you know, they, they, they weren't injured at all, um, they're not bleeding when I put them in the live well, a lot of times Times, most times, I'm, I'm not going to have any problem putting a cold strap on them, but I will check them from time to time. If I see that they're struggling a little bit, I'll take the cold strap off and just try to figure out a solution for, for keeping them organized. So those are just some thoughts. Uh, overall, I want to hear what your culling procedure is uh, and, uh, and whether or not you disagree with me. It's fine if we disagree. I'm always looking for better ways to, to, to cull, stay efficient while protecting the fish. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I'm going to see you out on the water. Take care.